Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in our community in the last week. Also, please keep in your prayers my good friend Betty Fenton, who is hospitalized. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Lascom? Here. Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third Order 3A, Tax Assessor's Report for Hearings Heard, heard on February 20th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Tax 3B, Tax Assessor's Report for Appeal Hearings to be held on March 27, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, Minutes of the Regular Meeting of the Scranton Housing Authority held on February 4, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight, Mrs. Craig? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you. Do any council members have announcements at this time? The Lou Rusby Jr. Foundation and State Representative Frank Farina will conduct the first annual Breakfast of Hope this Sunday, March 17, 2013, beginning with registration at 9.30 a.m. at Rossi's Ristorante, 1501 Main Street in Archibald. Tickets are $17 for adults, $12 for children aged 4 to 12, and free for, ch <coughs> excuse me, and free for children 3 and under. Advanced ticket purchase is highly recommended. Contact Carla Farina at 570-687-3500 or Teresa Stan at 570-840-2600. Eight zero. The LRJ Foundation is dedicated to hope, guidance, and education for suicide prevention and mental health awareness, and supplies schools in Lackawanna, Wayne, and Pike counties with education teaching packets on suicide prevention for staff and students. Please support this very worthy endeavor. The Fraternal Order of Eagles, number 314, located at 493 Meridian Avenue in Scranton, will conduct a Purple Day Epilepsy Benefit on March 23, 2013. The benefit includes a free health fair from 2 to 5 p.m., a DJ from 5 to 8 p.m., and live music from Earthen from 8 to 11 p.m. A $5 donation is suggested. Tickets are available in advance or at the door. All proceeds benefit Bless you. the Anita Foundation for the Awareness of Epilepsy and World Purple Day. For additional information, call the club at 570-961-5495. And finally, I'd like to wish everyone a very happy and safe St. Patrick's Day as you celebrate this weekend. May your blessings outnumber the shamrocks that grow, and may trouble avoid you wherever you go. That's it. Fourth Order, Citizens Participation. Our first speaker tonight is Ron Elman.
Yeah, thank you, Council. Uh, I'll only bore you with three subjects tonight. I don't know if anybody saw this in the paper today. It's a notice from American Rock Salt Company to dump polluted water into the Lackawanna River. They're asking permission from the Environmental Protection. Here, here people's houses are being charged to clean up the Chesapeake Bay, and they want to pollute the, the very water that we're being charged to clean up. Something got to be done about this. I know, I guess this is county and the state, but they can't be allowed to dump water in there. That's what this says. Would anyone want to read it? Next, I, I went down today to get my dog license so they wouldn't arrest the poor guy at $20. I think I paid more th th than Bill Young paid to keep that bar open for one day. D d does anyone up there know what you have to go through to open up a, a bar? In the first place, you got to have a lawyer. So there's that expense. You got to go through all these inspections, the bathrooms, the, the electrical, the water. You got to get your, uh, no matter whose name it is, you have to surrender your liquor permit, so you have to get that back out. There's, there's weeks and weeks of, of involvement here. Which, now, I'm not complaining. Uh, You can't use your stock. You have to get new stock unless, if you do, it's not supposed to be used when it's a month old. All the costs, the license, insurance, they wouldn't have made enough money opening in one day to pay for everything. So I come to the conclusion that the city has prorated everything for them. And I'm not against that. I've tried to get this done for years. For for people, you know, to, to sell at the food, food vendors and, and vendors at NAOG, they wouldn't prorate nothing. Now, if they, if the city, if, if, if Mr. Doherty has had a blind eye for this business to be, have everything prorated like that, it's got to be done for the next person that walks up there and wants to be open one or two days to sell tacos or car parts or something. He has set a precedent now, and it can't be, it can't be no other way unless somebody wants to go after Farley's and make them pay all the back expenses that they didn't pay, which would be a fortune. You know, it's not going to be one way or another. Uh, we're going to be in court again, and this time we're going to lose like we always do. Uh, I, I, I got this from the somebody that's been trying to get a vending permit uh, uh, prorated. And I don't know how to say this next one. About a week ago, I read the paper. You, you, you know, I'm, I'm not against daydreams and all, but there was an article that said they want to make Scranton a high-tech city. I don't know if anybody saw it. It was a big article. And bring in like the usual nonsense about the high-paying jobs and all the people will move in and fill up downtown. It's a bunch of daydreams. You know, at the other end of the state, there's a city called Pittsburgh. And they have Carnegie Mellon Institute there. I, I know you have, for year after year, for a generation, Pittsburgh has is, is been the high-tech capital of probably the whole world. There's nobody going to come to Scranton. That's like a couple of years ago, they said they're going to run the train track from here to New York City and people will come here to shop. You know, they, things just aren't realistic no more with, with, when you talk to people in this administration in this city. It's, it's, there's just asinine, ridiculous statements. You know, I, 
again, I don't know what council can do about the, this pollution into the Lackawanna River, but I only live a couple blocks from there. I go down there every single morning. And this is a shame that there's ducks there now and people are fishing there now. And there's still a sign that you can't eat the fish, but this cannot be allowed. This, this dumping polluted salt water in there. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Time up. I didn't hear my bell. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Evans. Thank you. Our next speaker is Donna Petrozella. Hi, Council. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, I recently became homeless, and um, I'm a single parent, or I was a single parent until yesterday. And I read this article in the paper that says, homeless program shares $2.3 million. And shares it with whom? Doesn't share it with, I, I don't know who it shares it with because it's not sharing to help me because I went to these agencies and they told me they can't help me. They will not help me. And United Neighborhood Centers gets largest share amount of $800,000. Well, they're the ones that said, no, no, we're not helping you. So I don't know who they're sharing with. I don't know if they're sharing with themselves to share to get a new car or to get an addition onto their house, but they're not sharing with the homeless, especially the single mothers. Now, I know that I am not the only homeless single mother in this county. I know that. Now, children and youth um, came to me and said, well, here's what we're going to do. If you don't find one of your family members to take your son, uh, then we are putting him in foster care. When I know other uh, homeless mothers who get to keep their children, so why am I being singled out? I had a residence up until yesterday, okay, and um, I was staying with a friend and it was an indefinite situation. I was able to stay there indefinitely. Now probation officer Alfredo Pisa apparently does not, because uh, I'm a distraction, that's what he said, okay, it's in my file that I'm a distraction. Um, said that I could not live with my friend and said that I had one hour to get all of my stuff out of my friend's home. Knowing I had, uh, knowing that I'm a single parent, also knowing that I would have nowhere to go with my son. Now, um, I received uh, public assistance. I'm disabled. I can't work. I'm trying to get disability, and I haven't gotten it yet. I can't. I, I don't know what they're doing, but they're not helping me either. Um, I receive public assistance. Um, I don't know, but um, can any of you? Can I just have somebody raise a hand and let me know? Being a single parent. Can you raise your hand and tell me if you can live on $200 a month? Can anybody? I didn't think no. so. No, no. But that's what I'm supposed to live on and provide home, uh, provide shelter, um, clothing, uh, miscellaneous things, and what have you for a child. And this is what the state expects of me as a, as a single parent without getting any help uh, from these agencies. I thought CYS, I thought ch the Children and Youth Services were supposed to bring uh, families together, keep the homes united. I didn't know they were supposed to pull them apart. Now, I, I, I don't know if you guys could do anything to help me, but you know, I'm scraping the bottom of a pudding cup. You know, you know what, scratch that. I don't even have a pudding cup to scrape. I don't even have a pudding cup to scrape. It blew away last night when I had to sleep outside in 22 degree weather. 
And I know most people have it mo uh, uh, you know, worse than I do. And I'm grateful, grateful that my niece was able to take my son and my son had a safe and warm place to lay his head at night. And there are other, you know, children and other, you know, human beings that have it worse than I do. Um, but, it, like, I, I, don't, I don't see, like, how this homeless program is helping the homeless because I'm not getting help and I'm getting turned away. And the only other thing I could say is, I don't know, I'm the prettiest homeless girl that I know. That's about it. So if you guys can help, I greatly appreciate it. Um, Ms. Petrozello, um, would there be any way of contacting you? Yes, there is. Can you leave that information with? Yes, um, I can. With our clerk, and uh, I think uh, what I'd like to do is speak with. Um, United Neighborhood Centers and see what the what the problem is uh, the city itself obviously doesn't have anything to do with any of the programs that you're mentioning um, some of them fall under county government however um, you know as elected officials I think we can at least make some contacts, ask some questions on your behalf, and find out what can be done to help you and to help you uh, to a point where you're able to be reunited with your child. And like, uh, I'm trying to get my disability, because I am disabled, okay? Um, I do have, uh, I'm bipolar, depression, anxiety, fibromyalgia, and spinal stenosis. I have five, not one, but I have five reasons why my doctors don't want me to work. And it's not just like, they're specialists, okay? And I'm trying to get disability and they're denying me. Then I apply again and they're telling me that, uh, that they're sending me forms that they're not sending me. So I don't know if you, anybody can help me with that. So, because if I had that, I'd be able to provide a home for my son and I wouldn't have to give my son up. Are you, are you referencing social security dif yes. disability? Then I think the best avenue I can suggest to you is to get into contact personally with the office of your congressman. They have the ability, I know, to um, hasten the process many times with regard to Social Security payments. So if you were able to do that, I think, you know, that may be one way in which you can help yourself. Well, I sure hope so, because I had to listen to my son cry, called me on the phone and cried, Mommy, I just want you with me. Mommy, I understand. please, can you meet me at school so I can give you a kiss in the morning? I don't know how many of you have children, but how hard, how, how, would, you, how would any of you feel if you had to listen to your son, who has mental problems? My son has severe ADHD, mind you, and he su suffers from separation anxiety. And you had to listen to your son on the phone crying. Please, Mommy, I just want to be with you. Can you please just come to the school in the morning just to give me a kiss? Imagine that. Imagine living on $200 a month to support that child. I don't think any of it, you guys can, and nobody, nobody can do that. I don't no, think anybody can. No could. one can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Doug Miller. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Uh, Good evening. I think Good it's evening. safe to say we have the lights back after all yes. these years. <laughs> um, you know, I just want to start off by just uh, saying that, you know, I am appreciative of uh, 
Mr. Washell coming in tonight. Uh, I was a little late, so I, I missed most of the caucus tonight. But uh, you know, I do appreciate him coming forward, answering questions. Uh, certainly, this is a very uh, serious issue right now, and it has a lot to do with the uh, financial challenges that the city currently faces. Um, but the bits and pieces that I did here, um, you know, I am happy that we will be able to make that bond payment tomorrow. Um, however, I am very concerned uh, about moving forward. Um, you know, when we look, I believe it was stated, 1.5 million will be due in June, um, and there will also be a payment to follow after that in September and December. Mm -hmm. And uh, those, are, those are payments at, at those times that we're still not quite clear on where that money may be coming from. And that certainly is a cause of concern uh, for me personally, and, I'm, and I, I know it is for you as well, as well as the receiver. Um, this is certainly, I think, needs to open our eyes and, and make us want to pursue some sort of avenue to uh, implement a program as soon as possible. Um, I know this has been on the table for, for a few weeks now. There's been some question in the legislation. Um, I know the bidding was, was a major part of that. Um, but I just really think we need to move forward here and put a plan in place. Um, I know there are many questions from businesses in the community, uh, residents in terms of the meter rate increases and the Saturday operations. Um, my questions were transparency as well as the rates. Um, I did have some concern on the Saturday operations. Uh, but overall, my whole um, focus is that when we do finally put a plan in place, my hope is that the, that the, um, the operator will, will be open and transparent and that you know, budgets will be provided and we know where every nickel and dime is going. Um, that certainly has caused a lot of problems that we face today because in the past we didn't have any of that. And we, we certainly just didn't know what was going on and, and that authority was being ran recklessly. There was no transparency. And all this mess was just unraveled, and, and now we face these difficult situations uh, at this time. So I just hope that we can get a plan in place that um, generates revenue. Um, we don't want to see this burden put on the taxpayers because ultimately that's where this will go. Um, and, 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 and how that will, will happen is, is, is tax increases, whether we want to believe that or not. And that's not an avenue that we want to, uh, we want to approach. So we need to put a plan in place that's realistic. Um, with its numbers, will generate revenue so that we avoid the burden on the residents of this city. I know it was discussed, uh, the idea of maybe closing a, a garage so that we can save some revenue <coughs> and, and be, have the ability to make our bond payments. Uh, Attorney Hughes brought up a good point, um, maybe even selling a garage. Um, but then, as he said, at the same time, you face the potential of having somebody come in and maybe having um, you know, uh, less rates and, and, and competing against us, we, it certainly hurts us. But it's still something we should consider. At this point, no idea is a bad idea. Uh, we face challenges, and we need something now. And we need transparency and accountability, and we have to have the ability to make our bond payments so that we avoid putting the burden on the taxpayers. And uh, with that said, that'll be all for tonight. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Dave Dobson. Good evening, Council. Dave Dobson, uh, resident of Good Scranton. Good evening. And, Good evening. Uh, I uh, I see her dropping the uh, council. I I'm sorry to hear that, but I understand. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Dobson. And uh, uh, I'm gonna miss you though after the first of the year. And I uh, do. Was uh, I missed the beginning of that? Uh, was anything asked about the dead meter issue? Uh, no, it was not because Mr. Washoe actually has nothing to do with the mm -hmm. on-street parking program. He oversees I solely see. the parking garages. So oh. those issues have to be raised with standard parking. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you people will get a rather stern letter out to them that that practice. Because it was close to... It was when you were sick. I don't know if you've seen the article. I've been trying to dig for it, and I, I can't find it. I'm going to have to go down to Times and try and get a reissue of it or whatever, or go online. But uh, uh, there was 30%, 40% of the meters had dead batteries in them, yes. and we were losing tons of money. Yes. Uh, the one week I parked in front of uh, Guild Studios down here, and all three meters were dead. It was after five o'clock, but they were dead. So obviously people have been parking there for who knows how long. Mm 
mm -hmm. and not paying a dime. Okay, uh, now last week we had a little discussion on tax exempts, and I hope to uh, bring the taxpayers in on that because uh, I feel that irregardless of who's lined up against us in this county and this area. Uh, now, granted that the university or Lackawanna College or any of these other institutions, they don't really take up a geographic area that would warrant uh, against the cost of their buildings. I mean, their buildings are very high value, they're very fancy and, and so forth. But I do feel that it is time for the state to compensate us because the constitution of the state is unreasonable on tax exempts. Uh, it's totally unreasonable. We have to support them irregardless of uh, how many and how m many there are. So, uh, I mean, it would, the happy medium would be somewhere in between. Uh, but uh, uh, with the current situation, we could wake up to find 50%, 75% someday. So it's an investment in the future. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to look into it, and uh, uh, I'll be back to encourage council, uh, current and future, uh, uh, with what I find. And uh, be careful on management firms, please, uh, with sewer authority or meters or whatever, because that's what a lot of these books I read are all about, like free lunch with David K. Johnston. People come in, they offer, you know, like Ford Motor Company, they create a car, they put it on the lot, they give 90 days credit to the dealership, and it sits there, and then after 90 days, the dealer owner, franchise owner, has to start paying for it interest on it at the very least and I mean they create that's a corporate corporation that creates something as opposed to coming in and offering to take care of your money for you I, I, I was down the bank a couple weeks ago and and my my uh, we have some uh, retirement money that we have to shift and the, the, the teller is there well I'd want to get rid of that right away I wouldn't want it around, you know, and it's like, oh, wait a minute, you're talking about the wrong way with my money, <laughs> or our money with, uh, you know, <laughs> you want to get rid of it <laughs> and put it into some annuity that might lose money on top of it? I don't think so. But that's, uh, a lot of these management firms come in and, uh, as we see now with the dead meters, they're not delivering what they promised, and I'm glad that things were tabled and we're going to take a step back and uh, hopefully we'll come up with a better deal or maybe just decide that it's not worth it. And okay, uh, 5E, I support you entirely on that. I'm just going to say that. It's ridiculous. And once again, the, the golden parrot last week is the same. 20 cents left over a week after this person I, in my neighborhood had her Social Security raise after her insurance is paid. I mean, that's, that's entirely way out there. And uh, HBSC, uh, Liz Warren, kudos from Massachusetts. Uh, HBSC banking was laundering drug money to the tune of a billion dollars, and nobody has seen a day in jail. <laughs> now, if you shared a little tiny baggie of something in this town, you'd probably wind up with your house uh, condemned and everything else, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, one final thing, uh, I wouldn't say take the job and shove it to this person if he makes it for mayor, but take his ideas and stuff it. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, here, here you go. Um, he thinks that council should work for free. That's, we, we should put our, uh, our school board, uh, give them a little commission on how much money you could save, and I think we'd do better there, too. Thank Have you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Joan Intosha. I, 
Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Joan and Tosha Scranton. Um, the other day I was coming home, and I'm a resident of the East Mountain area, and I was coming up 307 to make a right to go into the, um, to get to the East Mountain, and smash, I hit um, a hole that's very big, and I actually took a picture of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, I have to pay my taxes. I have to keep my car good. Um, I just spent over $1,000 last month to, so I could get to work. Mm -hmm. And um, I just keep thinking, like, if they're going to keep raising the taxes, why don't we at least not get, um, like, worry about things at our park and, 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 and extras when mm -hmm. we don't even have roads to drive on. So what I did today is I took some pictures going across Seymour Avenue. And I live on Elm. And on the corner of Elm, whether I like it or not, is the Friendship House on the corner of Derby and Elm. And I did take some pictures of there. And you could see where the two roads, and I'm, I'm going to give you guys these pictures if you'd Good. like, where the two roads don't even meet anymore. You can barely make a turn there. And after that, when you come up Elm, in front of the school area, this is the 15, probably like 1534, 1536 Elm. Um, there's all, the holes are just so big, and we don't even have like, there's no sidewalk, so if somebody's walking, they're walking in the road. The road isn't really wide enough for two vehicles at the same time, mm -hmm. so what everybody's doing is they're coming into the middle of the road, and it's getting really, it's not even inconvenience anymore, it's actually like very dangerous. So I have a whole bunch of pictures here of that. Um, this is right in front of the school also. And it is like where the, where the roads just end, they go right into the gutter, mm -hmm. and it's just pretty much washed off. When you come down to the bottom of Elm, there is um, barricades that are there. And it's actually thankful because if you do keep going, at least it's something to try to stop you because mm -hmm. there is a home way, way down the cliff down below. Okay, um, You make that right, and you go into what's called the dangerous intersection. Mm -hmm. And all this is is a small area. You go down Elm, and then it goes Beach Blucher, and then down to Winter Mantle. Um, th this is that S turn. I saw a lady the other day, not intoxicated, not nighttime, not um, inclement weather or any reason. She just drove right off of that and went straight into the thing. Her car was a Honda. It looked like it was like bent, like a V. Um, she did have to get towed out. Here is the section. I took a picture of this section where you could just see that the road washes right away and then mm -hmm. it's into the bank by the Irish Cultural Society. On the opposite side of the street is also where it just, the, the macadam is just gone and there's no curbing or anything like that. This is the corner that does actually wash off by the Irish Cultural Society. And what happens is, is the Friendship House is considered like a school. Mm -hmm. So anybody that is transporting those children, now Friendship House will come down another way to not congest that area, but there are all the other schools that have children that come up for their day program are not required to do that. So because they're considered an actual vehicle. So when they're trying to get up and negotiate that and you have the people coming down, it's just very, very dangerous. You come to a stop sign at the bottom of that hill, and there's a big hole there. So everybody's trying to go around. Mm -hmm. Okay, come to the bottom of the hill where River Street, where the project was all done, and it's beautiful there, and the traffic's all monitored. You make a right, and you're heading over to the hospital now on um, uh, Meadow. Meadow Avenue. Thank you. On Meadow Avenue. Well, that's like just as treacherous, too. And guess where it leads? to go over to the hospital, to the um, fridge project. That's a mess, too. And, and basically, I'm, I'm not trying to complain. I, I'm trying to just say we have a major concern here. Mm -hmm. um, and when it involves schools and children, um, I grew up on East Mountain. There wasn't very many people up there. Now there is. Mm -hmm. And there's a real lot of kids. And, and the 1500 block, I bet you there's, between the, between the 13 and 1500 block of Elm, I, I bet you there's, uh, um, low-balling the figure, seven to eight children that just live on that one street, okay. plus the school. And I'm just hoping that something could be done to make it safer so that we don't have to keep crossing the road. Yes, we and absolutely I, I don't know what's agree. In place. 
We absolutely agree. I, I can tell you that <clears throat> uh, throughout the last four years, it was actually the action of this council to increase significantly paving allocations within the CDBG program. But the issue with that is that CDBG paving occurs in low to moderate income areas. So um, I'm thinking that perhaps some of the areas that you have described are not going to fit those income guidelines. However, a, that does not mean, in my opinion anyway, that this situation should not be addressed. Right, it's and a safety concern. I'm very grateful that you have all of the photos. If you would leave those, please, with Mrs. Marciano. And we will make sure that the DPW and the mayor are both contacted and that these pictures are seen by both and council will request on behalf of the neighbors of East Mountain that these roads, these gaping holes are. are taken care of because this is a public safety issue. Thank you. I, that's what I was thinking. You know, everybody always says, oh, East Mountain is like the la da section. I said, this is our la da section. This is, this is what we're paying additional taxes for. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not, it, to, to me at this point, it's not even that. I, I'm, you know, we're, I'm lucky that I could pay the taxes I and know. the garbage fee and the whole, and, and, I, and I know we all have to pull our part, but like then when we do that, we pay all our taxes and our, our school's getting low grades. We can't make it down the road to even get to work if we have a job. I, I agree. I would just add um, East Mountain and West Mountain, as you mentioned, they're two of the areas, nicer areas of the city, and you're paying more in taxes than some other people are, and those two neighborhoods um, have some of the worst roads um, because of the drainage issues specifically um, in the freezing and thawing in the winter. So they're definitely issues that need to be addressed. And luckily the city, I, I did speak to Linda Abley the other day regarding grant money from the state that can be used in other areas. Um, there's also up by on Pike Street was one that I was also trying to work on, and we'll, I'll make sure this all gets passed along to her as well and, and to the DPW. Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Have a nice night. Thank you. You too. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? <clears throat> Andy Spraglia, Citizens of Scranton, fellow Scrantonians. Good evening. Good I evening. listened to Mr. Washell's presentation, and you and I know it's all a dream. The garages are not going to pay for themselves ever. In fact, even if you could pay the bonds off with the revenue from the garages, the repairs are massive. They're not going to do it. So you in the beginning said our uh, board over there was bad. They weren't running it right. Well, the trouble was the council that voted for us to take over the payment, if they couldn't pay, there's where the error was made. Mm -hmm. They did what the mayor probably told them to do. There's no way to tell them to say that we need it all in garages. We didn't need them then, we didn't need them now, and you know that Hilton got the other medallion garage because they gave them 120 spaces, mm -hmm. okay? And originally they were supposed to build their own garage where the Casey was. Okay, that's gone. Them garages are not going to pay. Now, the solution, we have to turn to a different way. By telling people they have to pay more to park isn't going to work either. You're just going to attack the businessmen in Scranton. There's no question about that either. I wish these people were old enough to remember when we had free parking down there in Scranton. And like Mr. McGough said, we had forced weight stopping on the lights too. That was tried too. But for some reason or other, somebody come to another study and that went out the board. Used to be able to cross all different ways. Okay, that was there. But the thing is, we need revenue. Now the state may help us when they take over the schools. Let's hope they do it soon. But the other thing, you gotta go to different directions. 
we have actually private business in Scranton run by government to these authorities. The sewer authority is a private business. And there's no question about that. What's your solution there? Okay, they're there. There's nothing you can do about it. But why not try to get some kind of a deal or hire somebody? We buy our electricity through probably somebody that arranges it. Why not go with the whole city to do that? And then the extra money that we're making on selling electricity to residents of the city, you can apply toward your debts. In which case, the taxes may not go up as much anyway. We're at for 40%, and there's no way out of that. You know it, and I know it. Everyone else in the city knows it. But you gotta look to different directions for income. You can't keep oppressing people. Politicians seem to know that. You just oppress people. You wanna do something, you do it. Let the poor taxpayer pay for it. That isn't working in Scranton. You gotta get, if you're going to go to that approach, you gotta get jobs in Scranton. Many, many jobs. They're not here, they're not coming. Maybe they'll never come. So you gotta look different approaches. I told you one thing, way. Maybe you should uh, spin off the fire department. Everybody has to pay for fire protection. You know that all these nonprofits have to pay for their electricity. They have to pay for their gas. They have to pay for this. They have to pay for that. But we ain't charging them for the service we're providing. You've got to look to that direction. All these approaches you've got to try. Because Scranton is a problem. The parking garages will never pay for themselves, so you might as well just forget about that. Your hope is that you don't have to give more than you have to. That's the only solution you got there. So different approaches where income can come in without oppressing the people is the best way to go. And I think you should look at any of them solutions and see if the aid can be applied applicable, especially to be able to charge the nonprofits or fire and police protection. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> uh, good evening, Council Marie Schumacher, resident and taxpayer. Uh, I can attest to the fact that, that uh, the pothole from going off 307 west on Seymour is a killer. Uh, there are others, but that one is really atrocious. Um, and then as to revenue sources, I was thinking of, uh, the other day I went to the Mulberry Bush to do some business and I went off Mulberry Street, at, made the right hand turn and almost got clobbered because there was a, a New Jersey plated car whose rear bumper was aligned with the curb on, on Mulberry Street. And I think we could make a bundle. I will bring the article next week because uh, somebody, some local municipality deputized, in their case, uh, the fire, firemen who were off duty to go around and do, they said the state allows this, to go around and give ticketing for uh, vehicles that are parked illegally. <coughs> And I think not only would it make Scranton a whole lot safer, but it would also bring in a lot of revenue. So uh, I think that's a consideration. I will bring that article next week. Uh, I was uh, somewhat disappointed that nobody asked uh, about the capital requirements, which I believe were like 10, estimated at $10 million in the Rich Report for the parking garages. And I hope maybe you can bring that up with, uh, with Mr. Washoe. I know it's not a this year kind of problem, but going forward it is, and especially if one is closed, which one gets closed. Um, okay, on to some former uh, other questions, which if they don't get answered tonight, I will submit in writing in the morning. Uh, Mr. Joyce, I appreciated the revenue figures that you provided last week, but I'd like to make two requests. Okay. Uh, first, that you normalize the comparisons where the rate has changed. Um, I assume last, uh, the, the figures you gave us last 
last week were just raw numbers of dollars. They weren't adjusted for the increase in taxes this year? Correct. I, I, I did mention that the earned income tax when their collections are up 30%, but I, I, I will admit that I did uh, fail to mention that there was also a 22% tax increase. So Yeah, so if you could normalize them as you provide them going forward through this year. And okay. then also, I would like to ask that you expand the 2012-2013 uh, comparisons to all revenue items on a monthly basis. Uh, I think that's, that's critical. And I hope that tonight you will be providing the number of entities billed for parking spaces and the number that have responded with payments to date. Uh, you were going to check that out, so I hope you have that to share tonight during motions. I don't have it to share during motions. I didn't get a response on that, but I will follow up. Okay. Um, and Mr. Rogan, uh, did you see the article in last Saturday's Times Tribune noting that the former Banshee uh, was not open for parade day because they ran into uh, delays obtaining city permits? I believe I did read that article and I spoke about it last week. I believe Farley's did open, which was one that was in question and the Banshee did not. Yeah, but the Banshee, but at that time, I don't think anybody was aware that it was due to a permit problem that they had been planning to open in late February. And I would like to suggest that maybe you could meet with Mr. I'm going to pr probably mispronounce this, but Shrewski to get the details because if it's a, st a systemic problem, maybe something could be changed inside in sure. internally to expedite permits so we get businesses open as soon as we can. Absolutely. And when, when I spoke last week about, you know, the bars yeah. opening and a couple of people well, brought this up, I didn't have a problem with the existing <coughs> owner okay. opening up, but what it's what it was presented as previous that somebody was coming and opening for the day. My, t my time. You I apologize. It during motions. Thank you. Um, and then ten, 10 days ago, OECD advertised that the draft uh, CAPER, the Consolidated Annual Performance Report, was available for review. Have you reviewed that? And, how, and are there any surprises in that? No, not of yet. I will uh, call into tomorrow morning to get a copy, though. Okay. Uh, Mr. Loscom, um, could you provide the procedure that's used by the police department to prioritize manpower uh, when they're big events, such as the, the parade day, the St. Patrick's Day parade? Um, sure. I, I would, I'm specifically interested in what an expected response time would have been uh, for normal operations, such as notification of a burglar alarm going off. So if you could do that, I would appreciate it. And then, Mr. McGough, I don't want to neglect you, so I'll ask for an update on the revision of the rental, rental property ordinance and express the hope that you'll be sharing the number of rental units registered to date. Um, I've been out of town for oh. over a week, and I haven't, I just arrived back today, so I haven't oh. been able to get there. Okay. And then, um, I, I'd like to close with Last week's, the, la the last speaker last week during public comment talked about electioneering from the podium being admissible. And may I complete this? And quickly, please. Yeah, if it, if it is, uh, why was Greg Evans asked to remove his campaign button the prior week if electioneering from the podium is, is okay? Um, I believe we're talking about a matter of free speech that's guaranteed by the Constitution. On the other hand, I don't believe that you're necessarily, um, maybe you are, guaranteed the right to uh, wear and carry campaign paraphernalia during a city council meeting. At the very least, I think it's most inappropriate. And um, I'll take it a step further. Uh, I also feel it's inappropriate for candidates for elected office to use that podium to campaign. Uh, I have the greatest respect for and give great credit to those candidates who do not use that podium or these meetings for um, self-promotion during a campaign season. Well, I agree with that, but I don't see what the difference is between a candidate doing it themselves and, and a, a supporter doing it, but thank you. Is there anyone else? 
Mrs. Craig? Fifth order, 5A motions. Councilman McGough, do you have any comments or motions this evening? Just very quickly, um, as I said, I've been out of town for over a week and uh, trying to get caught up uh, with some things. Just a, a couple of brief comments uh, um, about the streets. I think we all agree that uh, city streets are in pretty bad condition. Um, and. I know that the DPW has attempted in the past to try and keep up with as much as they can with patching and so on. Um, I know at this point in time, one of the great difficulties has been the weather, that they simply can't, can't get out and patch and obviously can't get out to repave anything as long as the weather remains this cold. Um, and uh, hopefully that when the weather does break and they are able to, then we take a look at the secondary things, or not secondary, really the primary things, and that's the cost of repairs or repaving of streets. And as Mrs. Evans uh, said, in a lot of areas where there is a great need for um, repair, there simply isn't money available to make the necessary repairs. Um, hopefully we can get around some of this uh, because there is a great need. Uh, the areas that were mentioned, uh, I drive on a lot of those streets uh, in Southside and I'm well aware of um, how bad they are. Uh, we've spoken before about the very poor condition of Lake Scranton Road, um, which probably hasn't been repaved in decades, um, but is in very bad need of it. Um, so hopefully we can find some way as the spring and summer comes to make these repairs uh, in, in all areas that, and certainly in the areas that are of the greatest need. Uh, secondly, uh, just a quick thing. I was not, not in Scranton for the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Uh, I was told that the weather was decent and that the particip participation was tremendous. Uh, and I would like to send out a congratulations to all the members of the St. Patrick's Day Parade Committee for uh, another great effort. Um, and a day that, and I speak of the parade, uh, another great day for families in downtown Scranton. Uh, I cannot speak to the events that take place after the parade. Um, that's a whole separate topic. Uh, and lastly, uh, uh, happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone uh, this Sunday. Please, uh, you know, enjoy your ham and cabbage or your shepherd's pie or Irish stew. Um, on Sunday and um, celebrate responsibly. And that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you. Councilman Rogan, do you have comments or motions? Yes, thank you. Um, just to start off regarding the caucus with um, Mr. Washo, the receiver of the parking, um, the parking authority. One of the big issues that is bothering a lot of people and that, that I asked was uh, Mr. Washo's salary of $100 an hour. And that's been the talk of the town. People would say, you know, we have Mr. Washington and they're making $100 an hour. And he does seem, to his credit, he does seem to have the facts and the figures and everything, um, you know, the council asked for. And I'm glad he said he's going to keep in touch with us. But it's very frustrating that you have somebody making more money in an hour than most people in the city are making in a day. Um, the tax base of the city can't support that type of wage. And uh, I am disappointed that when I asked him, Mr. Nerwashel, he wouldn't take a pay cut. Um, now I, I'm glad to hear that his hours, he says, are going down. Um, but $100 an hour is not acceptable. Also on the parking garages, um, and I'll, I'll reiterate my position, I believe we need to at least close or possibly sell a couple of the garages. There's too much parking for not enough parkers. And the garages, as Attorney Hughes and others mentioned, they have to be maintained and they have to be staffed. 
And when you have occupancy rates, 27%, 30%, 7%, 56, which isn't too bad in the Connell garage, 24 and 27, we obviously have more parking than parkers. I also agree with what Mr. Joyce mentioned of trying to lower the rates and extend having more customers. Um, a, a top floor discount was one of the items that have been mentioned. Um, also, there could be you know the same way when you sign up for cable TV or satellite dish where you get into a contract, you get a discounted rate to start, and then later on the price will go up. Um, there's a, a number of different ways to try to lure people into the garages, but raising rates to solve the revenue problem isn't going to fix it. It's just going to drive more and more people out of the garages and, and into those private garages. Um, next, I attended, uh, myself and Councilman Loscom attended the Pinebrook Neighborhood Watch meeting on Tuesday, and I want to thank everyone who attended, and especially Chief Graziano. Um, there were a couple issues that were brought to light at the meeting that were neglected, and from talking to members of the Neighborhood Association, um, the next day they were taken care of which is great, and uh, Chief Graziano has been doing a great job, and, and that's it's very good to hear. Um, also, kudos to the police department and the DPW for their good work um, regarding the parade and the cleanup after the parade, and as Mr. McGough mentioned, the parade committee. Um, the weather, it, it was better than okay, it was beautiful. <laughs> it was about 60 degrees. Um, it was a, a great, great time downtown, and it seems everything went smoothly this year, which is great to hear. Um, I spoke to us on a revenue issue. I spoke to school director Bob Sheridan um, regarding a revenue item that the school district is looking at that may also uh, bring in money for the city. And it was reported in the newspaper. And this is um, the technology where cameras would be mounted in buses and would give citations to those who pass school buses. So I will be continuing to work with Director Sheridan talking about that, getting some more information. And once I get that, I'll be sure to, to pass that along. Um, also, one announcement I forgot to make, uh, Giovanni Piccolino just messaged me, uh, the owner of Buona Pizza, um, they'll be having, he'll be having a free Easter brunch once again this year from 12 to 2 on Easter Sunday at Buona. So he would like to invite everybody um, to come out and attend. There is no <coughs> charge. If somebody is lonely or would like a free meal or like to socialize, stop down and, and say hello. It should be a good event. Um, I do have some citizens' requests. First, this is a letter that I received um, from a resident in the Hill section that would like to call our attention to several, several properties that the property taxes and refuse fees have not been paid for over 10 years, and the addresses are 421, 424, and 425 Clay Avenue. Um, they owe in excess of $100,000 in property taxes and refuse fees. And they state if you drive up the 400 block of Clay Avenue, there are large for rent signs on each property with an occupancy date of May 2013. Um, they would like us to inquire the following. Does the city intend to follow the condemned property policy ordinances and require that the developer pay all property taxes and refuse fees before the developer has issued any zoning or building permits? This resident's a senior citizen who pays their taxes and refuse bill on time every year. And if the city allows property owners to run up over 10 years and take no action against them, it's certainly not fair. So Mrs. Craig, I do have this, and there is quite a few pages of the uh, taxes that are owed, um, the garbage fees that are owed, everything is included here. So I, I will have this, um, and if you could pass this along to the proper departments. Also, um, to the police department, residents report that cars are running the street light on the Parker Street Bridge and it's a very dangerous situation. Also to the fire chief and Chief Graziano, uh, residents report that people are parking in the fire lane at the Kaiser Valley Shopping Center. And this kind of goes to the point that um, Ms. Schumacher mentioned that it, having firefighters deputized to go out and enforce these things would certainly be a good idea for the city and it's, it's certainly something we, uh, we should look into. Um, third, um, resident would like to know if the DPW is once again using glass as anti-skid I haven't seen this. I remember a few years back this happened and it was a, a very poor decision. Hopefully that rumor is not true. I haven't seen it in the community, but I'd like to get an answer on that. 
And um, finally, could we please send a letter to the DPW with the pictures of the roads on East Mountain? Ask that they are either placed on the paved list and in the meantime repaired. And also, could we please send one final request um, regarding Pike Street that is repaired and paved? And that is all I have until the agenda items. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Loscom, do you have comments or motions this evening? No, I have no comments this evening. Thank, Thank you. you. And Councilman Joyce? I do. Um, I'm going to try to be as brief as I could tonight. I only have a few things to report on, but before I begin, I want you to remember in your prayers, if you could, the family of uh, Mr. Marks, the late principal of Scranton Preparatory School. Uh, Mr. Marks was a very honorable man. Uh, he, I'm sure he was a great principal. And he was also my former Latin teacher. So if you could remember his family in your prayers, I would greatly appreciate it. Secondly tonight, uh, the city of Scranton has received a report from Berkheimer um, regarding uh, January and February earned income tax collections. And just to give everyone an idea of where we are, uh, for. Um, for January, total resident collections amounted to $1,036,582.38. And in these collections, or in uh, these collections, um, $434,766.73 was from the fourth quarter of 2012. 55 or uh, 553,516.88 was from the third quarter of 2012. 15,596.69 was from the second quarter of 2012. And 32,702.08 was from the first quarter of 2012. Um, as far as non resident collections, which um, we refer to on council as 888 money, which is uh, uh, an earned income tax on um, people that work in the city that don't have an earned income tax in their community. In the period ending uh, in January of 2013, the city collected 26,994.21. 7,170.11 was from the fourth quarter of 2012. 19,611.53 was from the third quarter of 2012. $3.95 was from the second quarter of 2012. And 208.62 was from the first quarter of 2012. As far as delinquent taxes are concerned, uh, in regard to uh, delinquent EIT revenue, on uh, the period ending January of 2013, Berkheimer collected $446,881.77. $343,650.26 was from the third quarter of 2012. 102,583.80 was from the second quarter of 2012, and 647.71 was from the first quarter of 2012. In regard to non resident collection or 888 money, um, delinquent 888 money, uh, the total for um, the month of January in 2012 was 12,374.88. This constitutes uh, collections of $8,383.60 from, from the third quarter of 2012 and $4,092.45 from the second quarter of 2012. So <clears throat> for the month of January, the uh, total amount of delinquent taxes and current taxes in regard to the wage tax that were collected uh, amounted to 1,522,833.24. Berkheimer's um, fee for collecting these taxes was 15,102.79. So the net distribution 
was um, one million five hundred three thousand two eighty eight forty. Also, we received a report regarding uh, the collection of wage taxes from the uh, month of February. The uh, total current resident collections from the, from the month of February amounted to two million eight hundred three thousand seven eighty five fourteen. The majority of this, uh, two hundred seven hundred or two million seven hundred twelve thousand nine hundred five eighty four was from the fourth quarter of 2012. 81,191.14 was from the third quarter of 2012. Um, 4,682.79 was from the second quarter of 2012. And 5,000,000, 5, or, or $5,005.37 was from the first quarter of 2012. As far as non-resident collections uh, or 888 money, we received a total of $62,044.44. $61,301.29 was from the fourth quarter of 2012. $640.37 was from the third quarter of 2012. So the total current amount of resident and non-resident earned income tax that we received in the month of February was 2,875,514.96. As far as delinquent collections are concerned, um, we received a total of $41,000. $39.98 in resident earned income tax and a total of $1,755.98 in non-resident earned income tax. Uh, the total delinquent collections were $42,795.96 and the total taxes collected for the month of February in regard to income tax was $2,918,310.92 uh, for the fees associated for Berkheimer for collecting these taxes was $40,837.35. Therefore, the net distribution was $2,877,422.58. So for the year, we're up to four million four hundred forty-one thousand one forty-four sixteen in um, earned income tax collections, and that's all for tonight. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening. I'd like to begin by thanking those who circulated city council nomination petitions for me, and every city resident who signed them. I deeply appreciate your continued support and loyalty. Also, I thank everyone who called and emailed me to wish me well and offer their thanks and understanding. It's my honor to work for you, and indeed there remains a great deal of work to accomplish. One of my goals during the current fiscal year is to cut health care costs by entering into contracts for prescription and dental services with bidders that can demonstrate savings for our city and a continuation of good services to city employees. In order to generate additional cost savings in future years, I hoped to establish a health care consortium among the city, school district, and county. As was announced previously, the county commissioners do not wish to explore potential savings in health care costs by participating in the consortium. Nevertheless, <clears throat> the city and school district will cooperate in the initial stage to determine if savings to both can be realized. However, the refusal to participate by the county commissioners at this time could jeopardize the viability of the consortium and thus any and all savings that could occur to benefit the taxpayers, not only of Scranton, but of Lackawanna County as well. In this vein, City Council wishes to review the current contract between the City of Scranton and Blue Cross. Therefore, Mrs. Craik, 
please send letters to the mayor and the business administrator requesting a copy of the current Blue Cross contract on or before March 22, 2013. Next, uh, the Office of City Council received a response on March 13, 2013 to the question raised by Mr. Spraglia during the March 7th Council meeting. Mary Ellen Clark, Assistant Administrator of the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority states that only the borrower is responsible for payment of obligations issued by the authority. The lender would have to seek any remedies directly against the borrower. The lender could not look to the authority, the city, or the county for payment. I hope this response is satisfactory to Mr. Spraglia. Please know that many of the questions raised by council speakers are actually questions that should be asked of the mayor and or department heads. And at times, some of the uh, issues, in fact, deal with the school district or even county government. As a result, City Council forwards such questions to the appropriate individuals and has no control over whether they choose to respond. Therefore, it is not City Council that fails to respond. Rather, it is the administration. Council serves only as a go-between for questions that should be asked of the appropriate city administrators and governing bodies. Now, as most are aware, some Republican senators and congressmen have forced job-killing across-the-board budget cuts that are damaging our nation's fragile economy. Despite voter opposition, congressional Republicans demand cuts to Medicare, Social Security, and Medicaid benefits, and tax breaks for Wall Street and the wealthiest 2%. They are seeking benefit cuts that affect our most vulnerable citizens, the elderly and the poor, including Social Security COLA cuts, an increase in the Medicare eligibility age, higher Medicare premiums for beneficiaries with incomes as low as $47,000, higher out-of-pocket expenses for Medicare beneficiaries, and deep cuts to Medicaid that would shift costs to individuals and reduce access to care. They would rather cut those benefits than close the loophole that prohibits Medicare from negotiating lower drug prices with the pharmaceutical companies, or close tax loopholes for Wall Street and the wealthiest 2% of Americans. In addition, they are threatening to shut down the federal government on March 27th and cause a government default after May 19th. People want jobs, not cuts. We want negotiation and compromise not sequestration and political gamesmanship. Therefore, as president of Scranton City Council, I requested a resolution, item 5E, on tonight's agenda that asks Congressman Barletta, Cartwright, and Marino, and Senators Casey and Toomey to oppose sequestration, protect Social Security, Medicaid, and Medicare from benefit cuts to close loopholes for Wall Street and the richest 2% of Americans, and to invest in job creation. We are five Democratic Council members, and as such, I ask my honorable colleagues to vote to, to approve this important resolution and send this strong message to our federal elected leaders, both Republicans and Democrats. In addition, at my request, Solicitor Hughes drafted a resolution, item 5D on our agenda, appointing Civil Crossroads as special city engineer to investigate and perform engineering studies regarding Lake Scranton Road. Again, I ask my colleagues to support item 5D and the quality of life of the residents of that area. Finally, I have one citizen's request 
Neighbors report a nuisance property at 612 Mineral Avenue. They state that the police have been to this property at least 10 times over the past few months, and they request a condemnation of the structure. Send an inspector as soon as possible, and that's it. 5B, amending file of council number 74, 1993, as amended, entitled the zoning ordinance for the city of scranton by repealing <coughs> section 516 entitled flood prone areas and enacting section 516 entitled floodplain management regulations at this time i'll entertain a motion that item 5b be introduced into its proper committee so moved second, second. on the question all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed the ayes have it and so moved. 5C, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a contract with Michael Baker Jr. Incorporated, 100 Airside Drive, Moon Township, Pennsylvania, to provide pre-demolition environmental inspections for approximately 20 to 50 properties scheduled for demolition of hazardous structures through Scranton's Office of Economic and Community Development, OECD. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Yes, I'd just like to note that this was the lowest bidder. Uh, yes, this was put mm -hmm. out to bid and we did. Yep. It doesn't always happen. <laughs> <laughs> we did select the lowest. Well, we did not. It was selected by the administration, the lowest bidder. Just quickly on the question also. Um, I'm glad to see this being done because this is something uh, you had, you that I had mentioned a while back regarding the amount of addendums to contracts that have been put out there to, to demolish these buildings. It seemed like everyone had additional monies they were requesting because of this. So I'm glad to see this being done. It could save us money in the long run through the OECD that could go to other projects. And I thank you because I believe it's due to your efforts, Councilman Loscombe, that this is occurring. So thank you for that and for saving tax dollars for our residents. Thank you. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5D. Ordinance of the City of Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, appointing Civil Crossroads Consulting Engineers as Special City Engineers to the City of Scranton. Due to a conflict of interest of SECO Associates Incorporated, the City of Scranton's engineer, to investigate and perform engineering studies regarding the condition and deterioration of Lake Scranton Road from Route 307 to Elmhurst Boulevard. We issue opinions, recommendations, and specifications for the required rehabilitation and resurfacing of all or portions of Lake Scranton Road, authorizing the payment of professional fees up to $10,000 to be paid from the city's repayments of Urban Development Action Grants account, and authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute a contract with Civil Crossroads Consulting Engineers. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so move. 5E, authorizing the Council of the City of Scranton to execute a resolution of opposition to across the board budget cuts required by the Budget Control Act of 2011 called sequestration and rejection of any and all approaches that expand economic inequality and shift increased burdens to those who can least afford it. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5E be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6A, reading by title, file of council number 9, 2013, an ordinance granting a special encroachment permit to Regional Hospital of Scranton of 700 Jefferson Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, for the installation of a canopy extending from the applicant's building 21 feet 0 inches, subject to conditions. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. 
What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6B, reading by title, file of council number 10, 2013, an ordinance establishing nine on-street parking spaces in the 700 block of Jefferson Avenue from the intersection of Jefferson and Pine Street north along Jefferson Avenue through and including the intersection of Jefferson Avenue and Gibson Street in the city of Scranton and repealing inconsistent ordinances. You've heard reading by title of <coughs> item 6B. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6B pass reading by title. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for Adoption, Resolution Number 9, 2013, approving the financing by the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority of certain capital projects for the benefit of Community Life Support Systems Incorporated, a Pennsylvania not-for-profit corporation, declaring that it is desirable for the health, safety, and welfare of the people of the City of Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, and the areas served by Community Life Support Systems Incorporated to have the projects provided by and financed through the authority, designating the mayor of the city, or in his absence, the president or vice president of the city council, as the person to act on behalf of the city council as the applicable elected representative within the meeting of the Eternal Revenue, Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as amended. Authorizing such mayor of the city or the president or vice president of the city council of the city to take certain actions on behalf of the city council of the city as such applicable elected representative and authorizing other necessary and appropriate action. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Community Development? As Chair for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. <coughs> Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for Adoption, Resolution Number 10, 2013, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a contract with Abstract Enterprises Incorporated, 628 Spruce Street, Scranton, PA, 18503, to provide real estate title searches for approximately 20 to 60 properties scheduled for demolition of hazardous structures through Scranton's Office of Economic and Community Development, OECD Department. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Community Development? As Chair for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Lasko? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. If there uh, is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.